Madam Chancellor, to become president of the most populous democracy in the world obviously takes a remarkable person. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam is just such an individual. He was born and raised on the island of Ramesh Waram in the state of Tamil Nadu at the southern tip of India. His passion for learning led him from humble beginnings to the prestigious Madras Institute of Technology where he became an aeronautical engineer. After a brief stint at the Defence Research and Development Organization of India, Dr. Kalam joined the Indian Space Research Organization, where he became the project director for India's first satellite launch vehicle, which placed the Rohini satellite in orbit. Later, he rejoined the Defence Research and Development Organization and played a pivotal role in the development of India's ballistic missile systems and eventually rose to be the scientific advisor to the Defence Minister of India. Dr. Kalam was appointed Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India at the rank of Cabinet Minister, where he was involved in the policy and strategic decisions in transforming India into a developed nation and a nuclear weapons state. Dr. Kalam holds the post of Chancellor of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology and is also a distinguished professor of many other academic institutions. His technological contributions also extend to the biomedical area, where his expertise in materials led to collaboration with medical specialists in the development of low-weight orthosis calipers and a cost-effective cardiac stent. Widespread recognition, coupled with his extensive government service, made Dr. Kalam a popular choice for high office, and he became the 11th President of India for a five-year term from 2002 to 2007. His popularity has endured, and he is still affectionately known as the People's President for bridging the gap between high office and the common people. In addition to his autobiographical Wings of Fire, Dr. Kalam has written many books. The titles are revealing. India 2020, A Vision for the New Millennium. Ignited Minds, Unleashing the Power Within India. Target 3 Billion, Pura, Innovative Solution Towards Sustainable Development. Envisioning an Empowered Nation, Technology for Societal Transformation. There are more, but the implications should be obvious. Dr. Kalam is passionate about transforming society through technology, in particular by inspiring the youth of India to harness science and technology for human welfare. Madam Chancellor, inspiring the young and engaging with the community are key aspects of our university's mission. Accordingly, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you confer upon Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. Kalam will be hooded by Dr. John Driver, Vice President Academic, and Dr. Kate Ross, Registrar.
Is that his address? Okay. It is with great pleasure that I now call on Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam for his convocation address. Dr. Kalam. Dear young friends, good morning to all of you. I would like to, on beautiful convocation hall, so I'm highly motivated inspired to give address, my convocation address. First, I would like to greet Honorable Cardinal Tyler, Chancellor, Simon Fraser University, uh, Professor Andrew Pete Petter, President of and Vice Chancellor, Shri Ravi Shankar and CG, and Sri Baj Dahan, and all other dignitaries, ladies, gentlemen, and dear students. Uh, friends, I am indeed delighted uh, to be in the Simon Fraser University, which is ranked uh, first among the Canada's comprehensive universities uh, for the last three consecutive years. I was inspired by the thought, thought of cooperative education, where education, where students alternating between paid work semesters and study semesters, graduating with contacts and marketable skills, and a year of experience in the field. This is the unique thought which should be practiced by many universities across the world in the present global environment. My greeting to SFU for such a noble action. I consider it a great honor to receive the honorary degree of Doctor of Law of the great Simon Fraser University, I have been thinking how the power of minds can be brought together for identifying the benefit of the society now and in the future. The world today is integrally connected through four rapid connectivities. They are the environment, people, the economy and the ideas. We all know that global warming, climate change, energy independence, safe drinking water, diseases and poverty are no longer problem of individual nations and they are planetary problem. Friends, we have seen whether a bank collapses across the Atlantic Ocean, generating economic crisis in multiple countries or Volcano erupting in a European island country, disrupting the thousands of flights flying the area, or Fukushima earthquake and tsunami in Japan, or a terrorist attack in some part of the world, seeds a great alarm, sends a great alarm uh, to the entire world to take stock of impacts and take collective actions. Similarly, ideas and innovation are no longer geographically are politically confined. An invention made totally uh, today somewhere takes no time to find its market thousands of miles away. With this world scenario, I have been propagating a system, what is called World Knowledge Platform. World Knowledge Platform. The purpose of the World Knowledge Platform it should bring together the core competencies of multiple nations and their institutions to benefit nation with the economic development coupled with peace and prosperity. India has gone through such experience of establishing world knowledge platform which I would like to share with you friends. One is Pan-African E-Network. The mission, 
initiated by India, which benefits a 53 African nation through providing telemedicine, tele-education, e-governance services with an investment of about $125 million to meet the Millennium Development Goals of Africa. Another program between India and Australia is concerned with the eradication of avoidable blindness in the world using the core competencies of both the nation in the field of ophthalmology. Same way India and Russia has jointly invested about $150 million each to create a world-class first supersonic cruise missile using their core competencies today it has uh, generated business volume of $10 billion benefiting both nations. There are, there are examples for regional cooperation which will bring sustainable development in the, in the nation and also to the world. Hence it is suggested to the world community to establish the world knowledge platform to arrive at a win-win situation which will bring regional prosperity leading to global peace and prosperity. And World Vision 2030 is a subset of World Knowledge Platform. It calls for a World Vision 2030, a world of nations where the divide between rural and the urban rich and poor developed and developing has narrowed down. A world of nations where there is an equitable distribution and adequate access to on energy and quality water. A world of nation where core competencies of each nation are identified, missions of synergizing the core competencies of different nations lead to economic advantage and a faster development for all the societies. A world of nation where all the students of all societies are imparted education with value system. A world of nation where all where, where affordable quality health care is available to all. A world of nation where governance is responsive, transparent and corruption free. A world in which every nation is able to give clean environment to all its citizens. A world that is prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful and happy and continues with the social growth path. A world of nation with creative leadership who ensure collect a effective mechanism to resolve conflict between nation and societies in a timely manner, keeping overall peace and prosperity of the world as a goal. So friends, on conclusion, once again I thank all the members of Simon Fraser University for honoring me with the Doctor of Law. My greetings and best wishes to all the members of SFU success in their educational mission and may God bless you all friends.